Okay folks, I'm just going to do um, something I did on the 16th of December 2007 um, as the translation of the memorial inscription found in Dalham Church for Sir Martin Stuckville. He's something like my nine times great-grandfather where he mentions Sir Francis Drake, a friend of his, and the voyage to the Americas. Also mention of the notices of the Stuckvilles and the Isaacsons, compiled by a Stephen Isaacson, and located in the British Library, London. A manuscript I have handled, and an early record of the Stuckvilles, which one day maybe I can get a copy of that for sure, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to press the button, folks, for the tape. Once again, I haven't heard it probably for ten years myself. Off we go. Right, it's um, going on towards Christmas now in 2007. I'm just going to mention a little bit about Sir Martin Stutville, son of uh, Thomas Stutville and Anne Whitmore, um, who died in... 1631 um, at the, the uh, Lord of the Manor of Dul Dulham in Suffolk. Anyway, concerning Sir Martin Stuckville, apparently, it's not apparently, I've actually seen his elaborate tomb, which um, exists within inside the church of uh, Dulham Church, with the um, Cromwellian type helmet hanging outside. Um, I visited it in 2006 and was you know, and I didn't expect to find it there. That was the interesting thing. Uh, anyway, there was a Latin inscription which is shown in the one of the photographs I've I've, I've taken, um, and it's over the tomb. And so here's a type of translation which was done by a, a mural and Osborne Foster when they visited it in the 1920s. The Fosters are actually related to. Um, the Stuckvilles as well. Anyway, here it is. This is the translation from Latin. Here, in the hope of a blessed resurrection, rests Martin Stuckville, our esteemed friend, son of Thomas Stuckville, an inhabitant of this village, formerly only son and heir of the wealthy patrimony of his master, a generous and prudent man, zealous for public good, and in this place, while he lived, worthy of God. He was conspicuous as a young man for having discovered America with Sir Francis Drake as a companion of his, companion of his affair, and finally destroyed by apoplexy, he died on the 13th of June, 1631, at the age of 66, all but eight, eight days, and leaving twelve sons and six daughters after him from two marriages, having just as many children from each wife. And of course, as stated, uh, Francis Drake didn't discover America, but that doesn't rule out the fact that uh, Sir Martin set, had sailed with him on other voyages. So that's a little bit about um, Sir Martin Stuckville. And I think there's lots of documentation um, about him in various magazines and articles and things. Apparently had um, a lot of contact with um, a chap called Mead as well. They used to write to each other. Anyway, um, I just thought I'd, I'd put that little quotation in there. I've got um, another couple of other little poems that I'd like to which I found when I went to London and visited the British Library. I went to the manuscript room after ordering the notices of the Stuckvilles and Isaacson by a Reverend Stephen Isaacson. Um, I think he died in 1839, this one. And he uh, dedicated this book, um, which was uh, it's about the, the Stuckvilles and the Isaacsons anyway. Um... It was bequeathed by uh, Reverend Stephen Isaacson. It was a seven times seven inch square book, maroon in colour with gold braiding, um, about 138 pages in length. Um, apparently, at the back of the book, I, I noticed a, a seal, Excelsius something or other. Um, 
It was a curious uh, leaden seal which was found near the rectory of Lydgate, Suffolk in the possession of Thomas Isaacson. It says um, the legend Gloria in Excelsis written on it. So, and within the book, the index at the back of the book names there's names and places like J John Thomas Stutfield, Joan de Stutfield, Susan de Stutfield, Talbot's Underhills, Valoines, Wakes, Quintins, Peaches, Pr Prikes, Robinson, Say, Bridgmans, Glanvilles, Hastings, Hyams, Pars. And there was also the Stutville Sonnet, which was, um, it's got the dates there of 1842. It was quite faded, so I think there was some unclear, unclear bits in it. Anyway, I'll, I'll see if, how, long, how I go with this. This is the Stutville Sonnet. Their name exists no longer, their renown hath passed for ever. The rude will age down jests in their fallen greatness. Not a stone remains of path and mansion, once their own. Yet they were proud and great in day of yore. Then there's two unclear sentences after that. They reigned as princes in their native land. Theirs was the generous heart, the open hand. Therein was a broad domain a genial time, and rank and pomp and state. But what are these to time? And then there's another um, sort of seal thing as well. And there's illustrations on page three of um, knights, ladies, heralds, lions. Um, and then another little quote. The memory of ancestral achievement is but an additional spur for exertion. Um, and extracts from the book, page four. Doug Dell's Baronage mentions how Robert Stutville was imprisoned perpetually for siding with Robert Curthos against Henry I, his land given to the Mowbrays. Uh, there were battles of the standard in Henry II's time, but the Stutfills fought and won. The land was given back to them. They were also Robert the the second Stutville founded two monasteries and some sort of small family trees emerge but I'm going to have to go back and um, get hold of the book again so I didn't really have time that particular time to go through it thoroughly but there, but there were some rough pedigree drawings of um, lineages but uh, the, the Suffolk connection is still rather bitty at the moment so I am trying to piece it together. Um, from beyond um, Thomas Stutfield, 1400 of Dulham, going back in time, there's like 100, say 200 years, which, which is unclear at the moment, which I'm trying to put right. So I'm not putting some things that I've got about the Stutfields on my tree until I've sorted that out. Um, I've just there's there's some confusion um, that I've got at the moment, so that will hopefully resolve itself. Although I know some people on their trees have put in things, um, I've decided to wait for now until I can find out a little bit more about that hundred years, thirteenth century or fourteenth one of those, <coughs> to discover who the father and grandfather is of the. Dalmain Thomas in 1400. I've got loads of information about the Stutfields actually. I'm um, digging around different historical documents and that. There's lots of things about wills and land and disputes and uh, loads of history that has been chronicled to do with the Stutfields in Yorkshire and I'm becoming quite familiar with some of the names that are going around now. Um, another little thing, during the Civil War of King Stephen's reign, 1135 to 1154, a small number of barons issued their own coins. And I have got a print of um, a copy of a coin. 
um, or extremely rare penny of Robert de Stutville, which was struck at York. And I think I've mentioned this on another tape as well. So it's all rather exciting, all this history, and one way or another, our Suffolk Stutvilles will be linked to the what we call the main line ones. Um, but they do seem to dart around a bit. Um, and the Stutfields in East Anglia are, are described as being an ancient family, so it's just a case of um, finding that the information. If I was up in Suffolk now, there might be something in the archives up there that would help out, but I'm not up there at the moment. I'm six hours away from that place. Um, but hopefully other people online can help assist. There's a Rose Bevan who does... Who's a, I don't know what, what her job is, but she's she is a genealogist, genealogist, and um, she has put stuff online before now in a thread um, replying to people's queries about the Stutfills. So I've actually emailed her, her, and I'm just waiting to see if she has got any sort of hints. I mean, I know before um, Dalham that they, they were at a place called Debenham, or Debenham, and I've got bits of information about that um, but Lee Abbey is another place I've got bits of information about snippets of things but I would have thought since that they were such a well known family that it sh should be quite straightforward to detect the rest of the tree really and link it all up because um, they wouldn't have just come out of thin air the, the, you know there's Sir Martin Stutville and there's his dad and you know they're all sort of very well known people so I can't see there being a problem it's just locating where the information is. Anyway, that's all for now. Right, folks, that's it. Another tape, another audio saved to memory card at the moment. And there's loads left. Like I said, I've got a lot of them already saved on disk. I'm trying to find out the ones that haven't been saved. Um, which I did straight off the top of my head onto Ancestry site. They didn't come off a disc. Some of them didn't come off audio pods exactly. Right, over and out again.